Hello, brothers and sisters. The Lord uh, impressed upon me Acts 17, uh, verse 32, but I'm going to go into the verses of 22 through 33 because at this time, Paul goes to Mars Hill of the uh, uh, Athians. I um, hope I'm saying that correctly, who were very religious people worshiping other gods ignorantly. And he tells them overall to recognize that there is only one God, one true living God, and that they need to repent from, you know, this idol worship and turn to the true living God. And it was a message I believe he wanted me, to, the Lord wanted me to share also, as Paul did to the uh, uh, Athians in Acts 17. Now, the Athians... Athians, Athians, or heathens, because, you know, they worship false gods. And the reason the Lord led me to this was because this is history being fulfilled again. We of the world, we of this world have worshipped our sports gods, gambling gods, uh, just gods of this world that we have, that we look and, and turn to for, for, for fulfillment and joy that we have just worshipped while not worshipping the true and living God. Uh, our Alba, our father, Paul's sermon to the uh, Athians was to get them to turn to the true God, the, the the Creator, because they had lost the knowledge of the true God, and that made them, you know, now worship false false gods. Paul calls them to um, he calls them too superstitious uh, because they give all the glory not to Alba but to the other idols, um, and. There was another, I believe, before Paul, if my research comes to me correctly, who exposed the paganism worship of these people and was condemned by it by the Athians, not only because he did not share the idol worshiping, uh, but uh, this person was in introducing, you know, new demons and the, and the same, and the same was being perceived with by Paul here, talking about uh, a creator, the true living God. But Paul was simply saying the true God is the is the one they are not even worshiping. How many of they have been cut off from the gods they worship in this world that they love, that they are worshiping, uh, and they're turning to the true living God right now. And Paul tells the uh, Athians, the God who I declare unto you to be the sole object of your devotion and call you to worship of is the God that made the world and governs it, and by the visible proofs of these you may be led to the invisible being which is the creator and be convinced of his eternal power and godhead paul goes on to convey that the lord that that god is the lord of heaven and the earth and he is uh the rightful owner the uh prior proprietor and, pres and possessor of all the powers and beings and riches of the upper and lower world material or immaterial visible and invisible if he created all all these things there is no doubt he can dispose of these things at his command. And the uh, Athians, like many of us today, were prideful and haughty, saying they came from out of, the, out of their own earth and were not akin to any blood of any nation. But Paul once again conveyed that God gave them breath and life and all things that hold, and uh, he gave them all things and that he holds our souls in his hands and in him we move and have our being. And many are like this today, thinking they are not of God and vice versa, and that they are in their own right responsible for things and how they are and what they do and what they have obtained and how, uh, and just who they are in their life, uh, has everything, um, has nothing to do with God without, uh, any of God's help of who they are and what they have obtained and, 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 and do and done in their life and who they are in their life, they give no credit to the Lord. And this was the same thing with the uh, the Athians. But we forget we have a relation to God and we do not walk contrary to it. We are his offspring formed by him. Just like we have children who we expect to obey our commands, so does our God being our father over us because he is the one who made us and gave us life. You think... Um, you think they obtained everything. If you think you obtained everything through your life without God, you're wrong. Because God blessed you and gave you everything you have and own. God honors man in making his soul after his own likeness. But man dishonors God if he makes his after the likeness of his body. And we wrong God. We wrong Abba, the creator, when we do this. So Paul proceeds uh, to tell them to repent, which is what the message today is about. Repentance. God is in in high demand for repentance right now with uh, children who are wholeheartedly repenting 
who are seeking him with all their hearts, mind, soul, and strength. <clears throat> and um, not use that uh, desire and energy on seeking other guys that give them fulfillment that they may or might not have been cut off from due to this uh, COVID-19. But Paul also teaches them the uh, atheist faith towards God as well, along with not, uh, really showing them the ridiculousness of them worshiping other gods. But he persuades them to stop the foolishness of this worship, but to return from it to the living and true God. And it has been placed on me to tell others the same message. If you are longing for this all to go away uh, so it can be normal again, this world, um, if you are, are basically wanting it to go, go away so you can go back to the normalcy of things, uh, this world is your God, basically. And you need to use this time to repent and turn from it and turn and turn to Christ. In this book, if you study it in Acts, there were times of great ignorance. Uh, human learning flourished more than ever in the Gentile world just before Christ's time. But in the things of God, they were grossly ignorant. And those ignorant, indeed, um, either knew not of God or worshipped him ignorantly. And idolatry was owning to to ignorance, such as the uh, uh, Athians were doing and practicing when Paul came along observing it. Let us not be ignorant, brothers and sisters, to worship man, putting our faith in man more than God. <clears throat> A lot of people worship politicians and, and Trump to make it all better and to have the solution. And that is uh, idol worshiping. You need to repent from... And instead, look to someone who can 1,000% give you joy and peace and make things better again. Not for you to go back to the way of your lust of this world, but for you to have a um, a desire for, for Jesus and not a, not a desire to want to commit any of the lusts of the world, to turn from them and sin because the desire to sin has been replaced with a love for Jesus Christ instead to want to only love him and obey him and rely on him and trust him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Not Trump, not Democrats, not man at all, but the true God, the Creator, who is, uh, who is, uh, who loves you so much, and we need to be looking upon Him, and relying, you know, on Him. God has taken away our idols, and even so, we we still try to uh, serve them in our own home, whether it be drinking, gambling, or whatever the lust we have uh that gives us joy that we think we love and need but we need to reevaluate our relationship with Jesus and start to worship God and turn away from the worldly lusts we worship um in Acts 17 verse 32 it tells us that some ridiculed Paul for what he was saying or preaching they heard him uh, patiently until he spoke of resurrection of the dead and then some began to mock him right now a lot of Christians including myself are still getting mocked even by what's happening around the world um, no one believes this is judgment no one feels a spirit within them to take pause at the situation because they have become bored of the Holy Spirit and instead they long and wait for the virus to go away so they can go back to the way things were in the way them themselves were and this is ignorant worshiping of the world and it's worldly lust f um, for you to go back and partake in but the Athians laughed at Paul and mocked him. As it says in verse 32, they appeased him with saying, we will hear thee again in this matter. But this was a polite dismissal on their part to Paul, overlooking and not yielding themselves to what he preached. So to Paul, so Paul departed from them. But the message in Acts 17, uh, verses 22 through 33, is that we all need to turn from ungodly, idle, worldly worship and repent from ignorance of this and turn to the true God, which is the creator, Abba, our Father. Many are not repenting in this moment. Repentance should be a reflection of change in your heart, not just only in your mind. I have often said um, a person who commits adultery or is a drunk can uh, repent and change their mind about fornicating or drinking uh, today or tomorrow or the next day after, but in their hearts, it's only a matter of time before they fornicate or get drunk again because the mind changed, but the heart did not. Once you get the heart in check, the mind follows. Um, when you fall in love from the heart, um, even when the person has hurt you, in your mind you're angry, but in your heart you might forgive the person because the heart controls the mind. It's going to have more authority over the mind. So repentance, uh, uh, so re uh, repentance being um, uh, a thing that you do needs to be a change of heart, not just of the mind. I don't really co-sign that repentance is... is just a change of the mind, you know? Um, 
if you have a heart to follow Jesus, you will. If you have a mindset to follow Jesus, you are more prone to change it and slip up and sin. And because you your heart is not right regarding the sin, it's only a matter of time before you sin again with no no heart to go sin no more. So God, please, brothers and sisters, please repent right now wholeheartedly in this hour. And as Jesus told the woman at the well, go sin no more. Stop worshiping idols. They will not give you peace and joy as your Savior will. You want the anxiety, worry, stress, pain, fear to go away, you know, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and, and start living for him through holiness and obedience. You can't repent and commit the same sin again, feel the same fear again, go back to worshiping the same lust again if you have repented to God. It's vain repentance. If you live a life not taking care of your temple, also your body uh, by smoking too much, drinking too much, guys, you need to you need to stop that. You need to take time to have a clean temple, not a toxic one. Don't defile your temple in this hour. Be sober-minded. Be clean in your temple right now in this hour. A lot of people are going to be in for a shocker when they realize in a second, in a moment, they should have been more obedient to the Father, they, that they should have been more obedient and living holy for Jesus, as he said to be and live in First Peter, um, the first chapter, of verses 15 and 16. And why are they going to be, or why are they going to um, have this moment? Is because this moment will be a moment of reflection of how they have not been living for Jesus all along. And it's going to hit them to their core to reveal how much time they wasted in not loving and pleasing the Lord like they should have been. And make no mistake, brothers and sisters, that that moment is going to come. I don't know when, but I know it's coming. So you better choose right now whom you serve and repent for your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and live for him and not the flesh and not the world, but only him. Paul preached to the ignorant in Acts 17, uh, verses 22 through 33, who did not have the real true living God nowhere in sight and told them to repent and turn to the real true living God. So I, like Paul, beg of you to do the same if you are lost and ignorant and worshiping other things that satisfy you and only give you glory, give glory to you and not God. Holiness and obedience and repentance is what we need to be practicing right now before it's too late. And that is the message to repent, to get out of the world, uh, stop looking towards worldly lust, worshiping them. And turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. God bless you guys.